It has been nearly a week since a jury in Minneapolis found Derek Chauvin guilty on all charges, including murder, over the death of George Floyd. They deliberated for less than 10 hours. The vast majority of the American public feels that justice was served in this particular case. But over the past couple of weeks, we have seen fatal police shootings that were not nearly as cut as dry as the Floyd murder, which happened in broad daylight over the course of nine and a half minutes, with several people watching and cell phone cameras rolling. In Chicago, 13-year-old Adam Toledo suffered a fatal gunshot at the hands of an officer. But this happened at 2.30 in the morning after police responded to 911 calls about gunshots. When officers arrived two minutes later, they perceived two, pursued two males carrying guns, and they caught up with Adam in the alley. And as he raised his arms, police had to react in a split second, not knowing that he had just dropped his weapon right before he was confronted. In Columbus, Ohio, we saw an arriving officer responding to calls of a knife-wielding assailant, and when he arrived, 16-year-old Makia Bryant was lunging at another teen with a blade. Then the officer again made a split-second decision and opened fire, taking the teen's life. Now, I mention these cases to point out that all police-involved shootings are not the same, and we need to allow the cases to play out in our criminal justice system. Now, there are renewed calls to revamp that system with new bills at both the local and federal levels dealing with police use of force, removing some legal shields for police and much more. My next guest, he's got the perfect resume to discuss all of this. Alvin Bragg is former Chief Deputy Attorney General of New York, where one of his duties was overseeing investigations of law enforcement conduct. He is now a Democratic candidate for Manhattan District Attorney. He's also a law professor at New York Law School. Alvin, good talking to you again. Good to see you. Thanks for having me on and, and, and to talk about such a sobering and important topic. I know there's two things we can agree on that the, in the Chauvin case, justice served and that all police involved shootings are not the same as much as some would like to throw a blanket over them. But are there lines um, where they're all tragic when someone loses a life, but they don't reach the level of criminality? And if you were the D.A., how do you convey and communicate to a public that, in some cases, it's just that, a tragedy and not a crime? Well, I, I would take a step back and actually, I, I, I don't agree with both the premises. I mean, I think in the Chauvin trial, we had some measure of accountability, but but justice in these cases would be, you know, obviously the life not lost, in my view. So uh, I, I do take your point that all of these cases... Uh, you know, need to be viewed on their on their own merits uh, from a from a criminal prosecution standpoint. But the broader lens uh, is just the racial data on these cases in particular uh, it, it is a tragedy unto itself. Uh, the fact that the number of deaths we have uh, and the racial disparities uh, of the deaths uh, is really troubling in and of itself. But you're right; we have to look at, at each case. Uh, you know, in terms of criminal prosecution, and I've done that throughout my career investigating these cases. I do think there's some issues with the law. Uh, the law varies from state to state, but as a general matter, the law is, uh, in my view, too deferential to, to police officers. Here in New York State, my home state, uh, I've been advocating for a change of law to last resort, that the police can only use lethal police force if there's nothing else that they can do uh, to save their life or the life of someone else. So, Alvin, let's pick it up there um, and use, for example, uh, the Columbus case. God forbid you're confronted with that in New York City if, if you're the new, new DA. If the officer doesn't intervene, another child could lose their life here. Um, what standard do we hold or should we hold to law enforcement? I know we say last resort, but nine and a half minutes is an eternity. One or two seconds isn't. How do we figure out you know, where even if it's a mistake, it's within the scope of a job versus something that was criminal. All right. So the first, just as, as, as I guess a public service announcement, that in the state of New York, all as of uh, April, uh, under a new law, all of these cases that result in a death are now with the jurisdiction of the attorney general's office. So in terms of who would, who would investigate, they would not... Uh, be investigated by a local district attorney. They would be investigated by the attorney general's office. That's an outgrowth of when I was at the attorney general's office and was a special prosecutor. That role has now been codified into law uh, and the jurisdiction expanded. Uh, but but last resort is not the standard in, in New York, right? The standard in New York uh, is 
thrown out of a federal case called Graham versus Connor, which is the case in, in many parts of the country, uh, which talks about uh, whether or not an officer uh, believes that it's uh, it has a reasonable view as to whether uh, deadly force is necessary. So that standard, uh, in my view, is, is too permissive uh, and, and needs to be tightened up. Uh, but 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 you're right. I mean, the the, the Chauvin facts and having a uh, nine minutes is different uh, in in terms of uh, the proof at trial. There was really no uh, you know self defense trial case put on. It was much more focused on causation. Uh, was was the principal defense. So you're you're right that the the cases will be tried differently and investigated differently. Um, you know, based upon the facts presented. When should the videos be made public? And uh, uh, Congresswoman Omar believes that even the state AG shouldn't be the ones trying these cases. It should be handled by the feds. Who's the right group? And, uh, you know, you spoke from experience that you were in, uh, at the state level when they made that change. But nonetheless, um, when do you release the video and who in the end should be doing the investigating? So I think that it's important that we have someone do the investigation who is not involved day in, day out in sort of an exclusive relationship with a local police police force. So, you know, in, in New York, that would be the local prosecutors, you know, working with local police departments. The state attorney general's office has, a, uh, you know, may have a relationship with police departments throughout the state, but certainly not the same uh, with the local ones. And we certainly should be staffed as a, as a matter with people who do not have relationships and don't work directly with uh, the, the, the local police department uh, from the prosecutors who are who are assigned uh, under our New York law, uh, you know, as a, as a sort of a constitutional matter, uh, you know, it has to either be the local DA or the or the state attorney general's office. The the, the federal prosecutor, I, mean, I was a federal prosecutor as well. As a general matter, uh, federal prosecutors will defer uh, locally uh, to to law enforcement that's local. And have them go first. I mean, the, the the one that your viewers may remember most famously on this was the Rodney King matter, which was tried first locally to an acquittal, and then tried subsequently to a, a federal a jury, and there was a conviction. Um, there's some double jeopardy issues and things of that nature, uh, uh, and also some kind of principles of federalism, where generally the federal government will defer and let the local government go first, and if, and if the the uh, result is an acquittal or something where where uh, the federal government thinks it should be enhanced in some way, then they will go second. What are your reaction to a couple of um, decisions that could impact certainly you or wherever wins the race? The Supreme Court right now is taking up uh, a, a gun case in New York specifically um, about whether or not New York, in effect, uh, can have a prohibition on concealed carry. Um, what's your sense? Um, and if the Supreme Court, with its new makeup, said, nope, New York, you went too far, you know, if people got a permit that's valid somewhere else, they should be able to carry in New York. This reciprocity that's now been pushing, uh, you know, by very conservative forces, uh, pushed in Congress and, and pushed uh, around the country is, is dangerous uh, for for our safety. I mean, think about this. Someone who's got a a, a gun license in uh, Texas, uh, and, and then because of that that permit, can then ride the two train here uh, through Manhattan. Uh, it just it doesn't respect uh, 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 you know to use the language of some of those who are pushing this states' rights. Uh, uh, we in New York purposely have very strong uh, gun laws. Um, that's what we've chosen to do here. We shouldn't be holding uh, to other states. And in fact, right now we have a challenge in that uh, states with lax gun laws where guns are sold are then being being brought into our state uh, by gun traffickers. And that's something I would prioritize uh, as a as Manhattan district, district attorney to address and work on which I led at the New York State Attorney General's office. So we need to we need to be saying no uh, to, to this dangerous concept of reciprocity. And we need to be doing more in terms of enforcing those who are bringing guns in illegally uh, from outside of our state, uh, and they're ending up doing lots of harm here. Uh, the Manhattan DA's office just announced it's not going to prosecute prostitution cases. Uh, I know you'll tell me there's a distinction in the, with the difference, but isn't that basically saying it's no longer illegal here uh, to go to a pro? Well, I mean, there is a, there's a difference between what's codified as law and enforcement. Uh, but look, I, I've, I've been in public service 
uh, for uh, the, most of my career. My theory of prosecutions is you follow the money and you follow uh, the contraband, drugs or guns uh, to the most culpable person or people. And that uh, will lead you uh, to real uh, change in crime. Um, you know, the, what, what the vice squad does here in Manhattan now, uh, you know, arresting people on the street uh, for uh, these, these offenses isn't making us safer. And if you look at the way that they're going about doing it, the racial disparities are stark. More than 80% of people who they arrest who are, uh, um, you know, purchasing sex, uh, and the same more than 80% for those who are poor, who are uh, uh, sex workers, are, are non-white. And we know from the data that that just doesn't match with, with the reality of, of, of who's doing this conduct. So the system of enforcement now is, is not making us safer uh, and is taking us away from uh, what we should be thinking about, which is sort of systems. You know, folks who are thinking back a, a case that my old office did, you know, looking at uh, um, uh, organizations which are uh, preying on runaways and then trafficking them. Uh, you know, that's the kind of... Uh, uh, you know, impact we need to be having looking at cases like that that actually have large scale effects on our public safety. Are you going to be the next DA? I believe so. I'm trying to uh, earn the support of enough Manhattanites. I think we have a lot of momentum. Got a number of uh, big endorsements last week Planned Parenthood, uh, the 1199 union, and been talking to everyday Manhattanites throughout the, the borough, and they are excited, and we are excited to talk to them. So, to all your viewers who can vote, in Manhattan on June 22nd, I, I humbly ask them to vote and support my candidacy. Alvin, good luck. Alvin Bragg there. All right, everyone, when we come back, we're going to head to D.C. And we're going to show you what is happening this week in our nation's capital. The answer a lot. President Biden is going to address the nation as he wraps up his first 100 days. Supreme Court in session, as you heard, working on several major cases and a lot more. We'll get into that after this.